Hey everybody, really appreciate you joining me for another Power BI tutorial. In this video, I am going to show you how to make custom animations for Power BI. You're probably thinking animations in Power BI, I have never heard of that. And there's probably a good reason for that. Power BI is obviously not someplace where we want to have a whole lot of animations. You know, we really want our Power BI reports to focus just on the data. So this is obviously something that I'm going to show you that you could get really carried away with. We don't want to do that. We're going to focus on just how to make some very, very basic, subtle animations for maybe a handful of situations. Like imagine that you, you are building a Power BI report and you have a landing page with a lot of buttons on it to help your users uh, navigate to different pages of your report or activate different bookmarks, or maybe you have one button in particular on your Power BI report that is super, super important, but it's getting lost and you're having difficulty getting your users to see that button, then just adding a small touch of animation or movement to that button can help users see it a little bit more easily. So in that context, I, I have used some very small animations before and I could see maybe you wanting to animate something. And the great thing about this, everything that you need to build custom animations for Power BI for the purposes that we're going to be doing are available in PowerPoint. So I'm going to show you how to build everything that you need to animate some buttons in Microsoft PowerPoint and how to get those into Power BI. It's pretty exciting. It's something, you know, pretty uh, that you can actually do in just a handful of minutes. You know, it's not something that you have to download a special software. It's not something you have to spend a whole lot of time on. Uh, you know, we're really just take, creating a few frames of animation, putting those into a GIF, and then adding that GIF into a button in Power BI. So now that I've kind of given you a rundown of the, the basics of it, let's go ahead and actually show you how to do it. So the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is just create some buttons using images that you created in PowerPoint. And you can choose whether or not to use text or not use text. Sometimes I do find that the text in a button, especially when you're using an image, does read better if you let Power BI actually generate the text for you. So I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. But first, I'm going to just insert a button. I, again, I like to use just blank buttons. I know that roughly this is going to be about the size of the button that I'm creating. I'm going to go back to PowerPoint here and you can see that I've already created, you know, buttons to just kind of help the user, you know, uh, visually understand that they're going to have the ability to swap between a bar chart, a line chart, and a scatter plot. So all you have to do is just like drag and highlight all of the options that make up the button, find a place where you want to save them. You can see that I've already saved all three versions of the buttons here, but you know, you can name it whatever you want. I'll replace it. I've got my bars and my line and my scatter plot saved. So I'm going to go back to Power BI here. I'm going to open up my format options. I'm going to go to style and I'm going to turn off icon and border and I'm going to grab fill and I'm going to use an image to fill this button. So I need first to just go and find where I put my buttons going to grab bars. You can see that this blue looks pretty light compared to what I created, and that's because of the default 50% transparency setting. I'm going to drop that down to zero. I'm going to set my image fit options to fit, and now you can see that I've got my image that I created for my bar chart and my button all set up. Next, I'm going to go to text, and I'm just going to put bar chart there. You can see that currently it's overlapping quite a bit. So I'm going to set the uh, horizontal alignment to left. I'm totally fine with the middle uh, centering there. And if you want to put a little bit of additional space between the boundary here, you can uh, play with your uh, padding settings uh, down below the text options. I'm pretty happy with 30 pixels. I think that, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to, of course, increase the uh, size. Looks like I might have overshot it just a little bit. No big deal. That looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and just use kind of a dark gray there. Okay. And next, I'm going to just, you know, create a couple of additional buttons. I'm going to go back to style. Now that I've copied and pasted my buttons, I'm going to go back to fill. I'm going to go ahead and delete the bars image because I don't want that for this one. I want to use my lines, set the image fit to fit, 
Of course, this is not a bar chart, it is a line chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and update the text on the button from bar chart to line chart. And I'm gonna go and do the same thing for the last one, and update that to scatter plot. I'm going to scroll down to my fill options, delete bars, browse for scatter, and of course change the image fit to fit, and we're good to go. So if you don't want to create animated buttons and you just want to create static images, that's fine. That's honestly what I do most of the time. Again, I would encourage you not to get carried away with animations. At the end of the day, we are Power BI developers. We are not uh, Pixar. But, uh, you know, creating uh, very, very subtle animations can help uh, some of your newer Power BI users uh, help their eyes kind of gravitate towards those buttons and maybe invite them to, you know, actually click on those buttons and play around a little bit more. So let's go ahead and uh, create placeholder uh, buttons in Power BI for our animated versions. And let's head back to PowerPoint so that we can actually start animating. So Animating does not really, you know, take as much effort. It's not as hard as you might think think it is. And of course, it can be done within Power PowerPoint. All we're going to do is we're just going to create a few new tabs. This is where we're going to animate. If you want to multi-select, I like to just kind of have a gray background on all of these so that my buttons stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my bar chart first. I'm going to copy all of that over here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create, you know, several different frames. If you know anything about animation, you know, it's basically just moving, uh, you know, a bunch of frames in order to kind of create the illusion of movement. And so what we're going to do is we are just going to create some frames here and we're going to change just one thing about each of these frames. So in this first one, I'm gonna use a pop of color to highlight this first bar. In the next example, I'm gonna highlight the second bar, then the third bar, then the fourth bar, and then the fifth bar. And of course, as you can already determine, what this is going to, to create the illusion of is kind of a highlighting movement, moving from left to right. Next, I'm going to grab my line chart button. I'm going to copy that over here. I'm going to delete some of PowerPoint's default settings. And I'm going to basically copy and paste the button just like we did before. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the number of lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to determine how many frames this animation has. So I'm going to go ahead and create eight versions of this button. And what I want to do here is I want to create an animation that actually shows the line moving. So in my first uh, frame, I really don't need anything here. In my second frame, what I want is just to show kind of the, the very first line. Then in my next animation, I should have spaced these out a little bit more. I want to be able to show the second, bar, the second line. And you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just going through and literally you know, leaving the next line visible. It's a little bit easier as you go because there's less stuff that you have to worry about. And it does look like I actually need one more button. I forgot that about the uh, blank version over here. So okay. And now we're going to do the scatter plot. And I think in the scatter plot, I'm going to kind of combine, you know, here I'm using color to create movement. Here I'm using, you know, different versions of the line chart to create movement. And on this one, I'm going to kind of combine the two concepts. So what I'm going to do here is count all of these little buttons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. 
So in other words, I'm going to need 12 versions of this button. Again, this isn't, you know, a real PowerPoint slide. If we have to go like beyond the boundaries of the slide a little bit, it's not a huge deal. Come to think of it, I'm actually just going to back up and do it this way. I think it'll be a little bit easier. Okay, so here are the 12 frames that are going to make up this next animation. And what I'm going to start doing now first for the first version, I'm not going to actually need to show any uh, dots at all. On this one, I just want to show that first, the very first dot. On the next one, want to show two dots and of course you know you can probably get where I'm going from here I'm gonna go through each of these frames and I'm just gonna add one additional dot so I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause so you don't have to watch me do all of that there we go so now I have you know literally if you run through these in order you know it's basically just gonna create the scatter plot you know one dot at a time uh, as I said, it might be nice if we combined uh, the same kind of color movement in here too. So if I want to go through and literally just grab the last dot in each frame and sort of call that out with color, that's also something that we can do to kind of highlight that movement just a little bit more. But again, I totally leave it, you know, to uh, anybody who's uh, creating their own first animation, you know, you do whatever makes sense for you. Uh, obviously, when you're dealing with animation, there are a lot of ways to get you know really carried away with this. But once I have that, now I'm going to go ahead and start actually creating my animation. So first, I'm going to need to go and do something else that's a little bit tedious, takes a little bit of time, but it's necessary for sort of uh, getting this whole thing to work. I'm going to set up folders for each of my animations because I'm going to need to go and save uh, all of those different frames that I created. So I'm going to call this folder line animation, scatter animation, and of course I'm going to go through and I prefer to give numeric uh, saving nomenclature to all of these so that you can act, so that you know you know which order you're actually supposed to run these animations. So the first one was 01, that one's 02. I'm going to save this as 03. 04, 05, and 06. I'm going to go to my line chart and I'm just literally going to do the same thing. So this uh, folder will run from file 1 through file 9. And so I've already got those saved. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my scatter plot. You can see over here that I already saved all of my animations for the line animation. Now I'm going to go ahead and save my scatter frames starting with 1 and going all the way through 12. And now I've already got my 12 frames set up. And now we're ready to animate. So I, I'll go ahead and pull up the folder so that you can actually see where I've got everything. But if I open up my animations folder, you know, I've got my bar animation, my line animation, and my scatter animation. And each of those contains all the frames that are going to make up my animated uh, button. The website that I like to use is just called easygif.com. And that's essentially what we're doing. We're just creating a, a GIF or GIF, however people pronounce it. Uh, image using the different uh, frames, uh, as I call them, or, or, or image collections that we saved from PowerPoint. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose the files that I want to use, navigate to my bar animation folder, and I'm just going to highlight all six of them. I'm going to upload those six files to make a GIF. This website's going to just automatically uh, animate everything for me. 
immediately I can make a GIF and you can see exactly how it's working. It's just running through all six of those frames. I can speed it up, I can slow it down, you know, I can do whatever I want to do. So currently there's like a 20 you know, millisecond delay or something. If I want to double that to make the animation run a little bit slower, I can. That is completely up, for, up to you. If you want it to pause on the first frame instead of just running through the animation over and over again, if you want there to be a slight delay, you, know, you can also uh, increase the delay on the first slide quite a bit. So let's go ahead and reanimate this. There's a delay. And then there's an animation. I like that because it's a little bit less, you know, in your face. You know, again, we don't want to get too carried away with the animations. Uh, you know, obviously this is really, really going to be distracting for users. So less is more. But I feel like that's a uh, pretty good first way of, of doing it. So next, we're just going to go ahead and convert this. Um, or sorry, we're just going to go ahead and uh, save this, this GIF which is actually super easy. All we need to do is just save the image as. You can see that it's gonna save it as a GIF. I already saved it to test it because I actually forgot how to save these. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and overwrite the bars. We're gonna save that. And there's our first GIF done. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just reload this. We're going to go ahead and create a, uh, a new GIF. So let's go to the GIF maker, uh, choose files. I'm going to go ahead and grab my line frames, all nine of those images, open them, upload and make a GIF. And if you're like me and you like to just, you know, slow this down a little bit, I'm going to go through real quickly and just add a 40 millisecond delay instead of 20. And go ahead and turn that into a GIF and you can see it's animating exactly the way that I wanted it to. I'm going to go ahead and save that image as lines. And now I'm going to go back and do my scatter plot. I'm going to grab all of the images that make up that animation. I'm going to upload and make a GIF. The more uh, images you have, you know, there might be a slight lag, uh, but Overall, it's not that bad. I've, I have made animations on this with over a hundred images before. Wouldn't recommend it. It takes a long, long time to save all of those files. I'm gonna go ahead and make my scatter plot GIF. And you can see that it's pretty much doing exactly what I wanted it to do. I'm gonna go ahead and save that as my scatter animation. So I've created my three GIFs. Now I finally get to go back to uh, Power BI and actually add those animations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Style on this first animated button. I'm gonna to go to Fill. I'm gonna delete the image that I had that was static. I'm gonna to go to Browse, and I'm gonna grab my first uh, GIF for the bar animation. I'm gonna wait, and you can already see that it's moving in background, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fit that. And I've got an animated button working for my bars. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and uh, grab my lines GIF. And now I'm going to delete my static scatter image and grab my scatter GIF. And there we go. So it just goes to show if I can make an animation, anyone can make an animation. I hope that you found this useful. I hope that this is now a new skill that you've got in your back pocket in case a project ever comes up where maybe you feel the need to animate something. I hope you'll remember this video. And I also hope that you will check me out in the next YouTube video for whatever Power BI topic I uh, choose to, to cover next. I haven't decided what that's going to be yet. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. I will see you in the next one.